Welcome to the Female VC Lab podcast. I have Katie here. Katie, in one line, give me your name, your title, and the name of your crowdfunding platform. Yes. So I'm Katie McBratney. I am a partner at Renew Venture Capital, and we have an offering called Purpose Rounds. Wonderful. Katie, what inspired you to become a venture capitalist or investor? Barbara, I did not mean to do it. I actually got my start in journalism. That's what my degree is. And then wanted things like health insurance and a stable job and moved into the marketing side. But I came to venture from being on the other side of the equation as a longtime operator and marketing leader and then a founder myself. So when I left my startup in summer, spring 2023, I was thinking about what's next and the team at Renew and the philosophy just really spoke to me and the change I was trying to make on one side. And I just thought this is too good of an opportunity to pass up, to learn more and have an impact on the other side Mm -hmm. of the, the proverbial equation. So it very much was a blessing of opportunity, luck, And really community, it came down to more than just my network looking out for me and my opportunities, but really true community, which I think is deeper than just, yeah, we're connected on LinkedIn. True community is deeper than that. I was having a conversation a little bit earlier about curated connecting. How do you connect with really the people that should be connected to you? And it's a little bit deeper than just LinkedIn. That is so my jam. I love that. And that's actually what brought me to the team is this really guiding principle that community can be and should be the connective tissue of a venture firm that's really rooted in purpose and profit and not one at the expense of the other. Very true. Katie, what is your investment thesis and kind of the motivation behind your thesis? Yeah. So we invest in, we have two theses that play together pretty beautifully. One is we back impact founders and impact companies. So that's pretty straightforward. They can be Mm -hmm. from any background, any sector, any of the classic 17 SDGs. And the second part of our thesis is that we back women overlooked and historically excluded founders. And knowing that with intersectionality, of course, those overlap a lot. Quite a bit. Yeah. And those don't have to be impact companies. Those could be non-impact companies. And really the thought behind that and the reason that spoke to me so much as a non-binary person who was a founder and operator, even though I'm a white person and I come with that unearned privilege, fundraising, we know the numbers, is hard. And then also this idea that impact to put more good in the world through business isn't limited to just the company you're building. It's also directly related to who we fund. And I think that's a critical piece of the equation and really looking to right a lot of wrongs. And also the the main job of VC is to capitalize on missed opportunities. And there is a massive business case. And I know and all of that. Those statistics, Katie. A lot of statistics. The, they just but we out. all know they come out daily almost at this point. The anti-statistics come out and then we don't hear the other statistics. For example, if you have these underserved, underrepresented, untapped founders on your team, you actually make more revenues. Yep. So why is only 2% of money going to any of like this, this set of people? We'll just say across the board, 2% across the board, across women and other people. And yet those companies make way more from a revenue perspective. And they're it's more capital kind of, efficient more capital efficient, they exit bigger, there's just so many statistics, exit faster, so many statistics like that. And it's interesting how they are overlooked and unseen, even those statistics. And we all know what they are. And yet, how do you move the needle on that? And that that was one of my motivations to come over to this side, instead Mm -hmm. of just being angry about the problem. I saw an opportunity where I can hopefully change some of it. That's right. And I think that's it's a recurring error that is going to take us attacking from all different sides because Correct. you're right. The stats are there and they need to change not yesterday, not last week, but like years and years ago. 
we talk about systems and I'm not going to say other types of systems, but we talk about systems, right? And that there are these systems that are built that are exclusionary. That's what I say. And if you look at that, there are many systems like that. And this is one of them. And so this is easily correctable. Yeah. And we're not afraid of systems. We say that we do two things. Like we say that we do two things across all aspects of what we do as a firm. And that's, of course, we're we're a venture capital firm. We produce alpha. Yes. Yes. And also we challenge and change ineffective and inefficient systems that are limiting the outcomes. And that 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 are exclusionary. One of them. Mm -hmm. That are exclusionary because there are inclusionary systems as well. We're just trying to flip it from one to the other. And it's not a easy thing to do, but it has to be done. Yeah. Very important. Next question, a little bit lighter. So what are you currently learning or listening to or reading these days? I'm a big reader. I joke that I'm a borderline book hoarder, but it's also (laughs) true. I a hundred percent just the first thing I did today when I opened my laptop was order three books. I'm currently learning and reading. So I'll start with reading. So I'm currently reading this book called Worn, Hmm. which is about the history of textiles and fabric, which sounds very boring, but it's fascinating because what it really is doing is using textiles and cloth as a lens to look at economics, innovation, short-term and Hmm. long-term effects, the systems all of the systems, the environment. Yeah. And it's really an interesting framing of how things we, we take for granted, right? We all wear clothes. They're made yes. of different materials, but they all have a deep history in yes. culture, right? Mm-hmm. Geography and people, mm-hmm. and of course, economics. So that's yes. super, super fascinating to me. And I like mm-hmm. to use that kind of lens to then shift how I look at other things. Yeah. And so that's really where I'm learning is where I'm not seeing things and need to dig in deeper. So that's a a bit of a heady answer, but it's really, I think, critical to this work is saying, yes, where's the math mathing because it's math and it's numbers. And where's there something deeper beneath the surface that we're just taking for granted or assuming as the single solitary right way to do it. And where can we interrogate that a bit more, which I think that I'll just be learning that my entire life because I'm a human and I'm going to make mistakes. But the, the continued trying and learning and digging is, to me, the, the hardest and the most rewarding part of the learning journey. I think in the learning, I think you touched on something very important, which is asking questions like why. Okay, this is, we just do it this way because this is the way it's done. Why? My favorite. I ask that question quite a bit all the time because then you have to think about what it is you're actually doing (laughs) yes versus just oh this is the way we do it okay so why are you doing it this way did someone do we have to (laughs) then it goes to the question that that question okay do we really have to do it this way anymore so or in this context or for this person or for this yeah it's It's, and that also relates to something that like, I'm also learning with purpose rounds, which are like the subcategory of reg A and reg CF Mm -hmm. that in itself and the opportunities that were opened up by the jobs act to -hmm. say like, why are we only letting accredited investors do it? Why are we saying that you can't support, you can't align your money with your values unless you hit certain criteria or just want to be philanthropic? Correct. And saying, what, how can we ask the critical questions, listen to the answers? I think that's a big step, right? We mm-hmm. often as humans rush to respond or to fix without actually sitting with things that make us uncomfortable. That's and then how do we take those building blocks and say, what needs to be reordered or moved around or set to the side? Mm-hmm. And we try that for a bit. So that's what I'm learning from a practical standpoint on, on one vein of funding mechanisms. And it's really fun. It's really fun to see where well, we've glad, gotten it wrong. I'm glad you brought up the Rex. Yeah, actually, my friend Ruth Hedges, I'm going to give her a shout out on this podcast, helped write that part specifically of the, job, the Jobs Act. Okay. And so she has many stories about that. But I agree with you, right? The premise was, why do you have to be limited 
to the certain types of people? And how do we open it up to more people to have exposure into this type of investing, equity investing? And I feel like it's been fairly successful. It probably could be more successful, but at least the opportunity is there and the ability is there now versus what it was when that happened in the beginning. It was just shutting entire big groups of people. Massive groups of people out. Massive. It's not even like massive groups. We know how many percent of groups, right? So to open that up to everyone makes it powerful. And then it also gives you that economic choice, right? Do I want to spend my money on X or do I want to invest it in a company? Right. So, and it, that's about agency, right? Like yes. instead of artificially deciding for entire swaths of people, we can still do it in a regulated, thoughtful way Correct. Correct. and give them the choice. If they want to, if they want to go on a vacation, if they want to invest in their house, if they want to invest in the stock market, retirement, great. This is just one other option because it's, another option. it's their capital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like you said, this has a little bit, few less restrictions. It's less restrictive as well. No, that's awesome. Okay. So here's the bonus question. Everyone gets it, KT. In two years, how do you see venture capital or investing having changed or evolved? Ooh, that's a fun question, especially in 2024 when everything's on fire. It's almost literally right now. Yes. It's very upsetting. Yes. So I think one, we've aligned more capital to societal challenges that face us. And that can, is, those are so broad. Those are, there are so many. Pick, pick your direction. I think also looking at the traction, the community, the capital, the assets under management, the founder pool, all of it, there, there is change happening in the right direction and toward, towards those systems, changing those systems we talked about. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to continue, especially with Gen Z Absolutely. moving more and more into the workplace. And I think also with the intergenerational nature that you're seeing in a lot of venture, right? It's no longer people who had, who had just the same background, born in the same era, went to the same schools. And I think that's one of the necessary components is the representation of who is in the room and involved in the d investment decisions. And I also think on conversations that I've had internally with the team at Renew, but also with all kinds of VCs from all kinds of different backgrounds and theses and everything, we're realizing we need to innovate as well and not just require that of our portfolio companies or deal flow. So I'm hopeful and optimistic that in two years, we will see change that we didn't expect, but is moving in a more net positive direction for everyone. That's awesome. So how do people contact you? Great question. Thanks for asking. I'm most active on LinkedIn. You can just look for my name. That's the best place to catch up with me and chat with me and then learn more about our work, get involved in that from all aspects. Like I said, community is at the heart of what we're doing. So you don't have to be a founder or an investor to, to be part of the party. And that's just renewvc.com. And if you're interested in participating in equity crowdfunding aligned with the purpose of what you're building, you can go to purpose rounds dot com to learn more about that. Wonderful. And all that will be in the show notes. So thank you so very much, KT McBratney from Renew Venture Capital and Purpose 